Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this press conference from the 47th Annual Meeting of the World Economic Forum here in Davos. Welcome here in the room, welcome on the live stream, thanks for watching, and welcome to everyone here on the panel. This press conference is dedicated to the launch of the high-level group of advisors of the European Innovation Council. And uh, joining me here today to talk about this exciting launch is Commissioner Moedas. He's the e European Commissioner for Research, Science and Innovation. Right at the heart of our wonderful panel today, we're joined by Majolein Helder. She's the Chief Executive Officer of Plant E from the Netherlands. And last but not least, we're joined by Jim Hagemann-Snabe, who's a member of the Board of Trustees of the World Economic Forum. Thank you for being here today, Commissioner. Um, Tell us about the um, high-level group of advisors you're launching today. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. It's uh, really a, a pleasure. Uh, I'm delighted uh, to be uh, here in Davos to announce something that is very special uh, and very important uh, for us in Europe. Uh, we call it the European Innovation Council. And we have two members uh, of that uh, group that will help us create this idea in the future, the European Innovation Council. One is Marilyn Helder, founder of Plant E, and the second one, Jim Schnab, that everybody knows, uh, really a technology pioneer uh, and a member of the WEF. The European Innovation Council uh, is, uh, I would say, my most ambitious project during my tenure of five years as European Commissioner of Science and Innovation. Europe spends uh, 10 billion euros a year on cutting edge innovation, uh, creates new vaccines. We were here announcing last, uh, uh, yesterday, uh, CEPI, the Coalition for Epidemics and Vaccines, uh, greener aircrafts, renewable energy, technologies, and much more. But we miss something in Europe. We miss the ideas that do not fit on existing categories. And that's something that we have to change. And the idea of the European Innovation Council is exactly that. How do you change that? How do you grasp that kind of innovation? Clayton Christensen at the Harvard Business School calls it the market creating innovation. Innovation that creates markets and that creates jobs. And these are the highest risk innovations. Innovations that most of them fail, uh, but when they actually succeed, they change uh, the world. So this is the challenge. How do we identify these kind of uh, uh, innovations? How do you scale them up? Uh, and finally, how do you champion them? How do you create in Europe a culture of champion people that create uh, these kind of innovations? So it's a huge challenge. It's a long-term challenge, but I believe that this new group can do it. The group uh, has 15 members. They are not the usual people uh, that normally get at the European Commission as advisors. But I do not want to have the usual people. I want people that are different. I want a different type of advice. And they reflect what I believe are the essential characteristics of this new wave of innovation, of this market creating innovation. First, the combination of the physical and the digital. People like Jim understands the digital world inside out. Uh, but people like Marjolaine um, is pushing the boundaries of biology and physical technologies at the same time. Then the second is diversity. The women and the men of the group come from very, very different backgrounds, uh, countries, levels of experience. So people like Tavet and Rikos uh, and Ingmar He have built billion euro companies, CureVac, TransferWise. Others are just starting their journey. And finally, ecosystems. The group includes people like Hermann Hauser, who built the high-tech cluster of Cambridge, uh, or Roxanne Varza, that is building Station Half uh, Hub at a campus of more than 1,000 startups in Paris. So finally, 10 years ago, one of my predecessors created uh, the European Research Council. That transformed the way Europe funds basic research and fundamental science made Europe a beacon for excellent science. Today, what we're launching is this idea of creating in Europe a beacon for excellence in innovation, 
for market creating innovation. So thank you very much for the opportunity to do it here in Davos. Thank you, Commissioner. Mayolein, um, we heard you're not one of the usual suspects. So before I invite you to, to tell us why you're joining this group, maybe you can give us like a 30 second pitch for, especially for our online audience as well, to understand what, what you're doing uh, uh, in, with your company. Sure. So um, we're a technology pioneer for the World Economic Forum. And what we do is we produce electricity with living plants as a new sustainable energy source. So while the plants are growing, we can directly harvest electricity without harvesting the plant. That opens up a whole new area of um, opportunities for, for example, natural wetlands, where we could combine electricity production with nature conservation. On the other hand, we could reuse rice paddy fields as well. So you could combine both food production and electricity production at the same land. So we're talking multiple land use, it's uh, very multidisciplinary, it's biology, it's chemistry, it's physics. So it's actually, well, a very complex, new, and as a, what I'm hoping, a very disruptive technology uh, to uh, several sectors. Thank you. So um, share with us, why are you joining uh, this group and uh, what makes you so excited about it? Well, I, I'm, First of all, I'm really happy that I get this opportunity to participate in um, something um, that's as innovative as, as this council is. Um, and the main reason for me to, um, to apply for the council was actually that we run into problems when we try to get subsidies. So people are always very enthusiastic about what we're doing, but when we get to the bottom of it, either they, the, the jury that uh, assesses the proposals doesn't really understand uh, how the technology works, which is logical because it's new and it's unique. Um, we've got a different business model than usual, so that that makes it really difficult as well. Um, and then what for me probably is the most difficult part of getting any type of grant or subsidy um, is that we don't fit in a box. So all these programs are structured uh, for people to be, to make them understandable. So we've got calls with a certain theme, um, and that's so, so far specified that the really cross-sectional, multidisciplinary, uh, disrupting technologies really just don't fit into the programs. So, um, and we ran into that for a few times. Um, like, yeah, well, it's sort of solar power via the plant, but it's not PV. It's biomass, but you don't harvest, so so it makes it really difficult. Um, so I'm really happy that we're gonna work on that, and I'm hoping that I can add a lot of, well, what used to be my frustrations into, and uh, make them work into a new program that actually fits disruptors like us. Thank you, Mayolan. And, and Jim, let's do the, the same exercise with, with you. While it's very exciting to work at the forum, and we, we share that, um, I, uh, my, uh, uh, I think this is not the reason why you've been selected, but rather your, your previous life. So share with our online audience, just in a nutshell, uh, what are your experiences, what are you bringing to this group, uh, before we then would like to hear from you why you're joining. Well, thank you very much. Um, uh, so, so I've uh, spent uh, most of my career, actually 25 years in the IT industry. Um, I uh, was lucky to join SAP, one of the few uh, global leaders um, uh, in, in, in technology software company that is actually headquartered out of, of Europe, and it shows that Europe can take on um, massive opportunities around innovation, around the digital world, um, and create a global leaders. Um, I've recently joined boards of uh, companies like Siemens or AP Miller Mask. These are ha asset heavy companies, so the real physical world, but they're all seeking the same opportunity. How can we add a digital dimension to what we do and with that uh, reinvent our company and our business models? So that is basically the background I come with uh, into this uh, project. So this is what you're bringing to the group, but why are you joining, uh, please? Well, let me first say that I'm, I'm really honored to be um, uh, joining this group. When, uh, when I saw the list of people, um, uh, I give uh, great credit to the commissioner for the selection. This is not just a very diverse group, but very unique people um, that have incredible experiences in various different areas. And I'm sure that when you bring those skills together, um, some level of magic can happen. Um, I'm very excited because I, I fundamentally believe, and I've seen that uh, in my own career, that we live in a time where we have unprecedented opportunities to not just make incremental improvements, but really reinvent the way we live, the way we work, 
um, and uh, potentially reinvent society to be significantly more sustainable. The technology revolution has only just started. Now to uh, capture those opportunities, we do need um, innovation. We need big ideas. And it is my experience uh, working with um, large companies that the biggest ideas actually come from the small companies. <laughs> and um, innovation is about the marriage of the greatness of an idea, a unique new way of thinking of a problem like, for instance, creating energy out of plants, combined with the ability to scale that idea into the market and with that create value and opportunity. Um, so I think that Europe needs to take a very strong stand. Um, we need to create an entrepreneurship uh, culture in Europe and we come with a very good starting point. I mean, don't forget the industrialization, which has basically been propelling productivity and, and, and improvements of lives, etc. over 200 years. It all started in Europe. Uh, we have the diversity in Europe. We have a good combination of large and small companies. We need to foster an entrepreneurship culture that can propel Europe. Um, my hope is that this initiative will enable Europe to create innovation. Through innovation, we create growth, which I think is essential, and through growth we create the jobs of the future, not trying to protect the current, but we propel ourselves into the future jobs. That is going to be critical for us to ensure that as we develop um, the opportunities for the future, these are opportunities for everyone. In particular, and I will end there, I am excited that we can together create job opportunities for the young people because not only do the big uh, ideas come from small companies, they also typically come from young people who don't have the same assumptions in their brains uh, as we older people. So I hope we can create that opportunity and I'm very excited for the level of ambition that the Commission has set to this project. Thank you very much. Um, Commissioner, um, I'm sure you will put the, the group hard to work. Um, share a little bit with us kind of what are the concrete involvements that this group will have uh, in, in promoting these ideas and promoting a culture of entrepreneurship and, and reach these, these market-creating uh, innovations? I think that this group will be basically our ambassadors, ambassadors of this new way of thinking of innovation. I think that they have a, a track record that allows them to be uh, representing also what Europe needs. And I, I take two uh, sentences, one from Marceline on uh, she said, we don't fit in a box. I mean, I think that this defines totally what we're looking for. The problem today is that if you don't fit in a box, you don't have a place. And so uh, she said it all. Then I think that uh, Jim, uh, with his uh, amazing experience in, in so many companies, uh, said something that for me uh, is uh, key, which is uh, he said, how can we prepare ourselves for the jobs of the future? How can we actually look for the future and not, not try to protect what we cannot protect? What we can protect is the future, how we prepare people for those jobs. And that is through this kind of innovation. So their role will be really to advise us in the European Commission. First, now in this first part, which is basically the midterm review of the program that we are doing as we speak. But then on 2018, we're launching a proposal that will go to the Parliament that will be the future of Europe, will be the next cycle after 2020. And so their responsibility is, uh, is huge for that matter, uh, but is a shared responsibility with uh, an ambition uh, of changing things, which is tough, uh, but it's needed today in Europe. So I, I'm very proud that uh, uh, of all of them, uh, but I really wanted to, uh, to thank uh, Jim and Marsline for being here today with me uh, because, you know, um, it's much better when they speak than when a politician speaks because they speak from the experience from the day to day and so that's, uh, that's really uh, um, today uh, very important for Europe. We need people that know how to tell the real stories and they are those storytellers uh, of their own stories and those stories is what can get us closer to the people in Europe. 
Thank you very much. Well, it looks like Brussels, that always uh, is called out as a bit geeky or full of policy wonks, has become more tech geeky now. So I think that's a good thing. I know there's there's colleagues from the commission here as well. Have they tried already to steal your secret weapon uh, away from you? Or no, I, I have fantastic support from my colleagues. Uh, and uh, absolutely um, uh, all of them, from uh, Vice President Katainen, who has been crucial uh, in this project, uh, from uh, Vice President Maros Sefovic, that is here today, my colleague Gunther Ottinger, that used to be on the, on the digital side, and uh, Vice President Andrus Ansip, they all have been very supportive. But more than that, my support comes from the Parliament, uh, a lot uh, of people in the parliament, a lot of MEPs have been asking for, for these uh, from the, the chair of the, uh, of the uh, committee that I report to in the parliament, Professor Buzek, to the Christian Eller, to so many of them that have been uh, telling me, look, this is what we have to do and you have our support. So I count on that support of the parliament and then uh, we have the countries uh, and the countries have been very supportive too. So we are on the right track to create something new, to change things uh, in an orderly way uh, with uh, participation of the countries, of the parliament and the commission. Thank you very much. Last question to, to you, Mayolin and Jim. Um, so many business leaders uh, come to Davos or to other places and have either wish list or demands or maybe even complaints about the public sector, right? So uh, if you talk to your peers in your communities how d and, and they ask, why are you doing this with the commission? What's, what's your answer? Um, for me, it would be uh, that if you don't participate in a dialogue, um, you will always keep on complaining. So if you're not happy with what's happening, you have to help changing this, this, the system and change the structure and the programs. So, and if you're happy with them, don't change them. Um, but I'm really looking forward to, um, within the, the Council, having strong discussions on what should change, how we could do that, because we're such a diverse group that I think that well, we're going to have strong discussions. We should have. Um, and hopefully that leads to a better um, program that fits uh, what we're looking for. So people around me and companies in my, in, in the phase of my phase of development are generally unhappy about several, several things. Mm. So um, getting funding in whatever way is always a, a, d a difficult thing and then getting grants is maybe even more difficult because there's a lot of bureaucracy involved a lot of paperwork um, so it, that, that's what they're unhappy about uh, the thing is I don't know whether we can change that uh, but that there's some if you don't try and if you don't engage in the, mm. in the dialogue there's nothing gonna happen so I'm really happy that we're getting this opportunity and that's exactly what I'm gonna tell my peers Thank you very much. Jim, you want to add to that? Yeah, I would just say that, you know, it's not an easy situation in, in being in policy today. Um, and unfortunately, uh, somehow, we have uh, come to a conclusion that globalization is to blame for the issues. It's not true. And I think the Davos conversation showed that. Yeah. It is progress. It's technology that is uh, changing environments, uh, changing jobs as well. And I believe that um, in a time where there is, uh, let's say, question marks around what, what is the role of Europe to strengthen that role, not with a bureaucratic process, but with inspiring young people, creating new opportunities uh, for innovation and growth, the ability to create your own jobs, and, and with that, propel Europe into the future rather than sit and uh, complain about policy. I think this is what this project is. This is not about um, handing in a report. And that's what I like about this project. This is about changing our minds. Um, it's a process of creating innovation and growth in Europe. It's about embracing the future. And if that can be the role of uh, Europe and, and the EU, then I am super excited about that future. Thank you very much. Commissioner, it looks like you've uh, chosen the right people for, for, for the group. Thank you very much for being here today. And uh, thank you very much for watching.